Welcome back to the Legacy Electric Z build. Today is all about our 3D printers. This video is brought to us by Eligu. They've thankfully sponsored this uh, build series here and they sent us two out of these four printers. Um, they did give me a 10% discount on the other two of them. So keep that in mind. So these are all Neptune 3 Max printers. They have a full Neptune line and uh, a couple other lines of printers as well. These are the largest format printer I could find that's a good price. Um, these retail about like $500, a little less than $500 each, which for something that prints this large, it's 500 millimeters tall by 420 by 420. So. I was just about to ask what made you choose these specific ones? Yeah, I mean, it's like the best deal. Um, I also saw that they like they supported a couple other YouTubers, so I was like, I'll give them a shot. And they were very responsive. As soon as we emailed them, they emailed us right back saying like, yeah, we're interested. And then I kind of just said, I plan on getting four, but I don't expect you guys to send me all of them. So they sent us two. Um, and yeah, we printed the entire body. You're now watching this, we've already printed everything. And we have, look at this, look at this pile. So many rolls. These top five have a little bit on them, but everyone underneath it is, Completely empty. And if you watch these videos, tell Tim you want a signed empty roll. Yeah, he'll, we'll send you one. He'll send you some empty rolls for merchandise. Yeah, and we'll sign merchandise. a legacy. But yeah, these printers have been really good. We did run into one problem, which I have a solution for. We ran into an issue where like the, this cable would hang down a little low. And then um, we didn't really run into this issue until later in the build series, but luckily we got a lot of prints out of them first, but the, this little cable got caught on, I think this printer and this printer. So two of them. Um, but I looked online after the second one kind of started going and uh, saw that people were using these little key retractor things. I bought a set of two of these just to test them out on Amazon. They were like $10 or something like that. Zip tied it here. This can fully retract down. It'll just pull this down, but it'll keep this up and out of the way. So, simple fix. Um, Chris from Tofu Auto Works. If you guys watch our channel, you probably watch his channel too. It's building a sick GTR stage uh, kit thing right now. Um, he's running these exact same printers and he actually used a piece of aluminum and he, I think zip tied it to the back of this piece and just had it stick up. So instead of folding down like this, it always has to stick up like this, oh, which awesome. holds it just barely out of the way. So that works too. But just one thing to be in mind, like to note, uh, we did email them after we had our second one um, blow up on us. Or like, it's not blowing up. It's literally just the hot end of the printer will run over the this ribbon cable and it'll melt the cable and have issues. Sounds cool that we say blow up. Yeah, it's kind of uh, unaliving itself. But, um, but yeah, so we, we hit them up and they sent us new cables. So we got a new cable on this thing, but I still have to tighten up some other stuff. And then I still have to swap this one's cable. It's still got the messed up cable. How does one go about 3D printing their own parts? What are some of the steps, I guess, you took uh, to make this happen? Yeah, so I mean, some people will obviously start with scans and stuff like that. With our model, we, uh, Ash and Carlos started with a poly model that they bought. I'm pretty sure, or they found somewhere online. So it would it would have been a lot easier to do our Z project if we started with an actual scan of our Z. We didn't get a good scanner until after we had already started everything. So I would scan your project first if you're gonna do something similar to this. But if you're just designing a simple project, you could just go straight into like a 3D software, like Fusion 360, there's OpenCAD, which is like a free like web browser based um, thing. There's there's a whole ton of them. I don't want to get into all of them, but design your part in 3D software of some sort, some CAD software, and then you'll go to a slicer software, which is like what you would use to set up the actual G code file for your printer to be able to like figure out how to print your shape and how you want it oriented and stuff like that. Um, we use Prusa Slicer, which is a free software as well, and it's super super easy to use. I really didn't use it at all. I was really well using it, but I watched him use a lot. It looks, <laughs> looks really easy. Um, but yeah, so he's able to take our big models and cut them all down. But like I said, we started with 
a poly model, which is not, doesn't have a, it's not a 3D form. It's not like it's 3D enclosed CAD form. It's like a bunch of polygon meshes that make up a form. So it's not exactly CAD accurate. So I put something up on my Instagram and just asked if anybody had, you know, any experience in taking poly models and turning them into a CAD model. There's a lot of like pain and headache in that. And our friend Ivan, we'll throw his Instagram on screen here. He, uh, he hit me up and he's like, dude, I'll help you out for free. So he did a ton of work in taking all of the different uh, panels from Ash and Carlos's rendering and kind of, we went back and forth and he like, had a couple questions about wall thickness and stuff like that, but we, uh, well, he was able to take everything and make it into a 3D model. So then we just took those, sliced them in that Prusa stuff, uh, the slicing software, and then ran them to our 3D printers. All in all, we've done a couple hundred hours of printing for sure. I say, the amount of rolls speak for themselves. Yeah, true. A roll lasted about 24, 30 hours maybe. So whatever that times seven is, it's a lot, it's a lot of 3D printing. A lot of them we failed too, because we were just, Testing out different testing out different things. Systems. Um, these printers do come with a, a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We bumped up to all the way up to a 0.8 first. Um, then we had some issues with um, the speed and uh, the temperatures we were printing at. I don't know if it's the room we're in, but uh, we ended up bumping back down to a 0.6. Um, I'm trying to talk to Chris again at Tofu Auto Works, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I've been using a 0.8, no problem at all. Here are my settings." I'm like. I literally just finished printing everything I need to print. <laughs> but uh, I do have some point eight nozzles, so maybe I'll do some test prints with that too. But uh, having a farm of printers is invaluable for sure. Now that we have a scanner as well, we have another project lined up for after this project. That's just a really quickie, but we do have one thing I want to scan for sure. Comment below what you think it is. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I get. So we have this, also if you didn't notice, there's another new little room. It's back in the catacombs of the shop. But we have this other room, which is now our chill room. Um, and it's also our packing room. We haven't actually got everything set up, but we have all of our shirts, which we need to uh, get out here and uh, set up with all of our packing stuff. But if you order a shirt from us, it'll be packed by me, by hand, right here in this dirty little room. <laughs> you'll write your special love note. Oh, yeah, she appreciates exactly. Little... Yeah, we got, we got Street Bandito. An industry garage stickers, you know, we're official YouTubers, dude. Look at how professional. We got this carbon is. fiber trophy. Yeah, from Formula D. For everybody that buys shirts, thank you. We really appreciate it. You know, we're trying to be full tubers here, but we're not really like too worried about like we're worried about getting money, but we're we're so we busy right now. Dude. We don't have time. And them danger hammer shirts coming soon. Yeah, we're gonna work on it. But you know, we gotta get to SEMA, that's number one. But so everybody that buys a shirt from us. I'll pack it right here in this room. I really appreciate it. Go to industrygarage.com. All the Street Bandito merch is on there. Link in the description. Grab a sticker. Say what's up to your boys. And that's where his computer lies at last. <laughs> we will get this sim working at one point. The computer Whoa. that has no operating system. <laughs> just downright embarrassing. It's got a cool sticker on it. So how does one go about getting their files to the printers, like from the computer to this? Oh, um, or what I, is that process like? Yeah, so there is a, uh, what is this cable called? I know you probably know. Looks Dale, like a house. maybe? It looks like a house to me. <laughs> um, there's a little SD card slot. You could plug it straight up to your computer and have it pull files from there, but a little SD card. I did find that um, they don't work with a, SD card that's larger than eight gigabytes though, for some reason. But my recorders do that. Yeah. Audio certain, I guess they don't have like the capacity to understand. Science bro, I got no idea. Computer bros, comment below. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, one other note to, if you're looking for a printer, like, uh, well, I'd, I'd say a printer in general, I'd say a printer this size, but it doesn't really matter. I would look for one, that, I don't know what this is called. That's there's like nice. a there's like a nice name for it, but it's like a flexible, removable metal bed. Um, I've seen some printers with like glass beds and stuff like that, which like oh it looks nice, like you could have like a really nice flat uh, surface. But then like removing your part, most of the times like this room stays pretty cold, so after the um, after the print is finished, it'll automatically turn itself off 
Um, it'll stay powered on, but it'll stop heating the bed. Once the bed cools down, like we'd come in and the print, we would just pick it up. It would be already released. But if you did have one, like if we picked it up right as it was done printing, it was still hot. You just pick this up, bend it like that, it would pop right off. So this is definitely a really nice aspect of these printers. I know I'm not like a 3D printer whiz. These are the first printers I've ever used. So I don't really have too much to compare them to. I've did a good bit of research on YouTube, but um, you know, they've worked. They worked very well. What is one of the main reasons why you went with the 3D printer route versus kind of how you tackled the board, which is more manual and just foam? Shaping it by hand. Yeah. Um, the Ford, the Ford, I think is just like so large and I mean, we could go this route, it would take forever. But um, with this, we're, we're building this entire SEMA car. It's, I mean, we started before we started posting these videos, but it's in a six month window. We took this car from being like a rusty shell to now in like, what, two, three weeks, we have to be at SEMA. Um, so having these print super accurate, uh, especially like the detail that's in Ash and Carlos's model, especially like on like the fender vents and stuff like that, the amount of time it would take me to hand shape those and have them match side to side, it would take forever. Like in the Ford, when I was cutting the, the rear vents in that back section, they're way farther spaced apart. And that still took me days and days and days of work. So while we were working on a lot of like the metal shaping and like mounting batteries, mounting the Tesla motor, building the cage, building the floors, all of that time we were working on all that stuff, these were running in the background and printing. They're like a little it's electrical like, sweatshop. I mean, it's awesome. Like they will work overnight. I have a little webcam here. This little guy was like 25 bucks. I don't remember the company. I don't know. Y Z W Y Z E camps. You monitor V3. Like you monitor your Yeah, yeah, price. exactly. Um, you can set up like a webcam like that and then the actual outlets that your printers run to, you could have them be on, uh, you know, smart home type outlets too. So I have a webcam that's just looking at them. So when a print is failing at midnight, I can like just worry about it all night and I can't do anything about it. <laughs> but at least all you, you know should do. Yeah, I know when I come in in the morning, like, oh, it's not gonna be a good day. Um, but what you should do is, yeah, set it up with some, you know, Wi-Fi based uh, outlets and you could see like, oh, printer number two is failing and you could turn it off before you waste a bunch of filament. How much do each roll of filament cost? Or is that like one of the main expenses, I guess? With yeah, yeah, well, these were about 13 bucks each. These are the LEU brand. We did try two other brands and they didn't seem any different to be honest. These were just, these are easily accessible on Amazon. They were fast. So every time I was gonna run out, I just buy 12 more at a time. So we have 70 of them. So it's like a little bit under a thousand dollars probably that I spent on all of the 3D printing, uh, just materials wise. A lot of hours, <laughs> Yeah. but also a good bit of this has been like, you know, we printed probably six sets of maybe, maybe six in total, uh, Headlight buckets, maybe more than that, maybe eight. It's a lot of headlight buckets. Same with the air dam. The front air dam kept failing. Figuring out like scale and... Yeah, well, yeah, we did actually have a scale issue at first with the headlight buckets. They were a little small, so we scaled the whole model up to 106%, which ended up being just about at it. But again, if we had a scan of the car before we did it, it would have been easier to like... Get more of accurate. Yeah. yeah, we would know for sure scale. So if you start with a scan, you shouldn't have scale issues like that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, all in all, these printers, they're workhorses and they're dirt cheap. Um, so, I mean, you could go for a much larger printer. I know like that Modix company has like a printer that's probably the size of all three of these. But the issue you run into then is you can print with a really large print nozzle. That's cool. If you're going to do some finish work with like mud work, um, it's fine. If you have layer lines, you can go really fast and just mud over them like we did. Um, but your printer is only going to be as fast as your one print head, or if you get a dual print head. But if you have a whole farm of a bunch of them printing it in sections, yeah, you have to glue the sections together later. But four printers are printing at you know the same speed that your one big printer head would be printing at. So you can like print technically, 
even though you'd be printing it one big piece, you can print the same piece four times as fast with four printers. So having a nice balance of large work surface where you're not like gluing together 20 pieces for a fender, you're just gluing together seven, um, definitely makes it easier. And then also having a, you know, a good number of printers helps also the time scale at least. But yeah, these made this possible because otherwise if we were hand shaping this car, it'd be near impossible. It would have been a long shot and everybody would be like, yeah, yeah you ain't yeah. even making money. Exactly. Like I hand shaped the, uh, hand shaped and formed the rocker panels. And this took me like probably four or five days in total, both of those and just mud work and stuff. So like, that's just on those two. <laughs> like those are really small, fairly simple. Uh, well, they're pretty complex, I guess. But yeah, just two panels out of the, what, like 12 that we've probably made so far. So yeah, big shout out to Eligu. We're gonna go ahead and link their, uh, website in the description below. Um, yeah, and tell them Street Bandito sent you because yeah, you heard it here. <laughs>